Here's the second practice that he calls attention to, that he finds in faith communities that he's observed. He calls it embodiment. In Christianity, Judaism as well, you know, we teach that matter matters. When Jesus enters our body, when we have faith and give our lives to Christ, our bodies become what? Temples of the Holy Spirit. They become holy. They... Salvation for a Christian is not to escape our bodies, not to get off the earth, but it's knowing that we'll be resurrected one day in new sinless bodies that will live where there is a new heaven and a new earth. In our worship, in our praying, we reach out to God, we reach out to one another with our bodies, we greet one another with a holy hug, a holy kiss. So here's hate about that. We would agree with this. Anyone who's participated in a Zoom-based wedding, funeral, or religious service during the COVID pandemic knows how much is lost when rituals go virtual. Yes? Perhaps the most important embodied activity that binds people together is eating. People who break bread have a bond. This is one deficiency the virtual world can never overcome. Humans are embodied. A phone-based life is not. Screens lead us to forget that physical bodies matter. Here's, a, here's an atheist telling us we need to have more potlucks. Hmm? Relationships over busyness. Amen. Yes? A third spiritual practice in faith communities, which hate, hate recommends we practice as a shield against toxic technology. Stillness, silence, and focus. <laughs> this is our sweet spot. <laughs> hate looks at what we've got and he goes, wow, I never knew. Be still and know that I am God. Yes, Psalm 46. As we follow Jesus, our good shepherd, he makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. God says through the prophet Isaiah, in quietness and in trust is our strength. Hate writes this. Meditation traditions prescribe how to sit, breathe, and visualize the body. Without training, the mind flits about like a jumping monkey. Do your, does your brain ever flit about like a jumping monkey? <laughs> but he, without training, he says, this is what happens. And I think of so many verses in the New Testament that talk about renewing the mind and Paul teaching us to, whatever, you know, to think about things that are lovely and pure and gracious and holy. Think about these things, Paul says. Take your, cap, your, your thoughts captive. With our multi-screen, multitasking lives, the monkey jumps even more frantically. Those seeking spiritual growth are well served by separating themselves from the noise and complexity of human interactions with their incessant words and profane concerns. Smartphones and social media smash the levee, flood consciousness with alerts and triviality, fill the ears with sounds, fragment attention, and, sc and scatter consciousness. I mean, that's just powerful writing. He's describing so specifically what is happening to us where we do not control our technology. Mm -hmm.